The Federal Reserve and first quarter earnings cast a shadow over Wall Street. Welcome to Market Insights, I'm Katie Pilby. Wall Street saw significant selling on Wednesday as Treasury yields hovered near five months high after comments by Fed Chair Jerome Powell and some disappointing earnings from the likes of Travelers, Abbott Laboratories and US Bancor. Well, this is potentially not what equity investors wanted to hear as first quarter earnings season is now underway. Well, to discuss this and more, I'm joined by Amy Kong, partner at Corian. So Amy, what's your take on the market's mood swing today? Hi, Katie. Uh, I think the market's downturn is uh, natural. And I say that because we've had a very strong 2023. That winning streak did continue into the first quarter. The S&P was up nearly 11% for the first three months. Mm -hmm. And so it just seems very natural to take a breather. On top of that, to your point, the Fed did speak this past week. I think the higher for longer mantra is now back in play. And that obviously adds a layer of uh, concern, if you would, into the market and obviously showing in some of the stock prices we're seeing. Well, moving on from that, then on the macro front, employment does remain strong, but inflation remains high. Are there any signs investors should be worried about, do you think? Like, like any market environment, there are pros and cons. Uh, I think to your point, you're highlighting some of the um, optimistic data points that we're seeing as well. And of course, there's a there's always a laundry list of concerns that we can always pull together. I would think that the top of mind risk that I, I believe I'm watching for, and I think investors should also be watching for, you know, is the fact that interest rates are at a much higher level today than 15 months ago. And monetary policy does work with lag and variable um, uh, impacts. And at the end of the day, too, we're mindful that inflation, which has been improving quite a bit last year, stalled a little bit. And that sticky inflation is something we're watching. We're also mindful that, as we've seen in the 70s and the 80s, that inflation does come in waves. And so a second wave of inflation could uh, be a risk as well. And again, not suggesting that it's happening, but just things that we want to be very mindful of as we're watching the markets over the coming quarters. All right. And on the Fed, please explain to us what you're expecting and when. So the Fed remains very data dependent, and I can appreciate that. Uh, I think the prospects of any rate cuts between now and June have really dissipated, especially with some of the Fed commentary. The Fed is really trying to see data points get back to that long-term target of 2% and sustainably stay there. We haven't gotten there yet. And so between now and June, we're going to see two more CPI or PCA data points. I'm hopeful that the trend will resume, uh, but I think that's probably not enough for the Fed to start uh, cutting rates. So my personal view is that any potential to start this down cycle would probably get pushed out to probably September if I had to put a time frame to it. But again, everything is data dependent and it would be very hard to extrapolate just based on what we what we have been seeing so far. Equity valuations, they remain above average. You say you would caution chasing performance in the short run. Why is that? I think in general, as long-term investors, um, we still find that the equity markets should produce uh, inflation-adjusted returns through time. But, you know, as any investor with a lot of cash trying to get into the markets um, and, you know, just thinking about how much of a run we have seen last year and into the first quarter, as I've mentioned, it just seems uh, to be prudent to be disciplined in terms of getting into the markets. Having said that, I think there are still lots of really interesting companies out there with very strong fundamental growth potential. And it's not to say we're pulling out of the markets per se, but it is just being mindful of entry points and uh, perhaps not going in all at once, but timing uh, in tranches over a couple of quarters. And so I think at the end of the day, um, what we're seeing is that the market seems to be in a very complacent mode. Uh, and 
we're just cautious in a very short run, uh, recognizing that the price to earnings ratio for the S&P, as an example, is now, you know, around the 20, uh, 20 times mark. Uh, and so, again, we're just very mindful that if you have a lot of cash, you just want to be careful in terms of how quickly you want to get into the markets. Uh, and we're also, again, cognizant that in today's uh, market environment, you're seeing that there is opportunity not only in the stock market, but in the bond market as well. Uh, and that's, again, another um, aspect that we're very mindful of in terms of instead of just stocks in the in the past decade, you now have bonds as a viable option as well, as well as cash yields, at least in the temporary space, um, to consider if you have uh, that extra dollar to invest. And finally, on earnings in regards to the results, what's your take so far? It's still very early. Uh, the banks have mostly reported so far. And what, what I have been watching for on a personal note is just essentially any uh, red flags as it relates to the consumer. Uh, thankfully, I haven't seen much of those uh, surprises, which is good. But the higher interest rate environment has dampened uh, net interest margins and income for many of these banks. So we're watching that very carefully. It is still very early. So um, I think right now we have started to see some health care. And I think next week and the following, we will start to pick up a lot of earnings in the tech space. And that's going to be very telling, especially since, in, in my uh, opinion, a lot of the investors out there still believe that the tech sector should be contributing more to earnings growth uh, this season. And so there's lots, to, lots of eyes, if you would, on the tech space in the coming weeks. All right, watching tech. Amy Kong, thank you so much from Corrient. That is your market insight. Don't forget more videos, of course, on Reuters.com.